Welcome into Blazers Inside Access. We're sitting down with Coach Blaine McCorkle of the Bellhaven football team. Coach, thanks for joining us. You bet. Thanks. We're pushing towards the end of the season. Bellhaven was in action this past Saturday. They were on the road against a good Texas Lutheran team. And before we dive into some, some highlights, I just want to get your thoughts on the game. Did fall 34-14 against a, a good program, but I want to get your thoughts on it. Yeah, really good program, as you said. And uh, you know, this week they're pretty much playing for a conference championship against Mary Harden Baylor. And I think the whole Division three world is probably looking to see what happens in that mm -hmm. game. You know, Texas Luther now sits at seven and one. They've won seven straight, playing really good football, and I uh, really like the way they operate. You know, I told the kids after the game, I'm a fan of Texas Luther, and yep. I like the way they do things. And, you know, if you look at their roster and their players, they're really not much different than ours. They're just older and more developed. Yep. Um, they're very well coached. They're very disciplined, and they're something that we should model as a program uh, to aspire to be. So. Uh, our kids went over there, they fought hard, they played hard for four quarters, made some really good adjustments at halftime and, and tried to finish the game off well. Uh, so proud of their effort. Obviously, we still want a different outcome, yep. um, but do recognize played a really top-notch team and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll learn from it and move on. Yeah, and let's go ahead and jump into some highlights. Got up to a quick start, received the opening kickoff, marched down the field, scored a touchdown, 81-yard uh, drive. Let's go ahead and start right here. This is a little screenplay uh, to Brad Foley, and he really breaks this one open. Yeah, great great drive uh, to start the game. Went down and scored right off the bat. Brad made a great play, as we talked about here on a bunch. He's a great open field runner. Mm -hmm. um, gets a great block out in space there from Zay Stevens, one of the freshman offensive linemen who's doing a great job and uh, set us up to go ahead and score here uh, about two plays later. Yeah, and then just after that, uh, Hunter McEachin would hit Mario Asagunla for a 19-yard touchdown. Uh, we've talked a lot about Mario. Let's talk about the play, and I want to talk a little bit about Mario. Yeah, you're exactly right. Just, just hits Mario on the slant there over the middle, and uh, Mario great, makes a great play. Got a defender on his back and still pulls it in, falls in the end zone. And uh, great to see Mario go out there and make a play. He wasn't able to practice all week, had an infection in his leg, so he was gipping around out there and went out there and played hard. So, so proud of what he gave us, and that was a great way to cap off the first drive of the game and give us some momentum. Um, had an unusual play there. He had a, the flag on the sideline, as you noticed. They gave us a yeah. sideline warning. We're still trying to figure out what that was for. When you're in the red zone, it's kind of hard to get a sideline warning. Yeah. But we did. The play still stood. So it was a great, great drive to open the game. Yeah, and Mario's been a, a kind of a flex position player for you. Obviously, uh, came in as a quarterback, but he's played a lot of receiver for you. A, a great athlete, and he's really he's improved week to week, at least in my eyes. Yeah, he has. Um, you know, learning the offense, getting comfortable being here, getting in the system, and play in different positions. And that's one thing our offensive staff works really hard every week is try to figure out where to put him in different spots that don't have tendencies and give him a chance to make a play. But you know, we've seen him at quarterback, we've seen him at tight end, we've seen him at receiver. Mm -hmm. You know, it wouldn't bother me if Coach Vine sees him at power forward and Coach Palmer <laughs> sees him at first base because I promise you he could do both. Yeah. He's as good an athlete as there is on this campus, and um, we're excited that he's here with us. Now, after the touchdown, Texas Lutheran would go down and score a couple times quick. Right here, punt return, Kobe Blunt. Uh, you kind of switched up return men throughout a couple times throughout the season, but Kobe Blunt with a nice return here. Yeah, he's our go-to guy. You know, we when you sell him out of there a couple weeks ago, it was, he had a, an injury he was dealing with, and we wanted to get him back in there as fast as we can. And anytime he touches the ball, he's got a chance to take it the distance and make a good play for us. And uh, once again, freshman in there making a play. So yeah. uh, guys were excited, and that gave us a little bit of momentum there in the second quarter. Um, to keep us rolling and keep the, keep the game tight and give us good field position. Now, Texas Lutheran did score a couple of times. They were, they were leading pretty, pretty hefty early, but a nice play right here. Uh, Seth Gatson, uh, who's played safety for you a lot this year, makes a nice interception to, to get you guys the ball back with about just under a minute left to play. Yeah, really nice play Seth made. Had a great return on it. You know, Seth's a senior. He's a captain. He's a real great leader on our team and really excited to see him make the play. You know, the, the unique thing about that, that's the first interception TLU's thrown all year. Wow. And their quarter, you're going into game eight, that's incredible. Their quarterback, as we mentioned last week, is really dynamic. Uh, he can run, he can throw he can do all that so um, big big deal for him to get that first pick of the year against a really good quarterback and um, that set us up to get the score here right before the half as we'll see here in a second yeah and after the interception set y'all up uh, pretty deep in TLU territory and you got a free play right here uh, it looked like the the down lineman jumped the snap a little bit yeah they did they jumped and this is something our offensive staff does a good job working all the time working every week if they jump we sit still snap the ball and take a shot because you really have a free play you have nothing to lose uh, the interesting on this one was you had two penalties. You had their offsides, and then they got a pass interference yep. on the back end of it, so it allowed us to choose what we wanted. So we took the pass interference, uh, gave us the ball on, you know, down inside the 10-yard line, uh, put four seconds on the clock, and we had one more shot before the half expired. And fortunately, got a touchdown there, which we'll see here in a second. Yeah, and the touchdown did come just a, just a moment later. Uh, Nick Lauderdale, great heads-up play in the back of the end zone, especially to keep his feet in bounds. Nice play by the freshman. Yeah, Nick, is, as you said the magic word again, another freshman scoring yeah. a touchdown there. Um, he's really come along a lot here the second half of the season. Had a great play on a third down earlier in the game. It's not on the highlights, but 
his future is amazing. You know, he's big, he's long, he's fast, he's got good hands, and he's really competitive. The thing I love about Nick Lauderdale is he will block. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one trade bark that you look for in your wide receivers is who's going to be running downfield when the ball's not in their hands trying to make a play. And as excited as I am for him to make a touchdown, we're excited about what he's doing when he doesn't have the ball as well. Yeah, the ability to do that is definitely something key, especially in a freshman already showing signs that he can block and uh, and be a quality receiver. Uh, you talked about halftime adjustments. You went into half down 27-14. Uh, good TLU team. We've talked about that a couple of times. But to make those adjustments come out and really put up a strong fight in the second half, uh, some great defensive stops. Yeah, really for our defense, it was a tale of two halves. And what, what they did in the second half was really admirable because you got a really good team. It's late in the season. They're up on you a couple scores, and they came out and they fought. I think we only gave up 98 yards the entire second half mm -hmm. uh, against a really, really good TOU offense. Um, so really excited about that. We started, we were tackling better. We were getting off blocks better. We were just playing with a little more emotion, a little harder. Uh, we were wrapping people up and had a goal line stand here, as we'll see. It's pretty impressive. Um, you know, Connor Fordham, you see there playing linebacker. We'll talk about him in a minute. But, you know, stuffing blocks, letting people run, and uh, just a really good deal there. Isaiah Blackman's in there making tackles, and, and he played really hard all game as well. What impressed me about that play was the offensive lineman got to the second level, which is what they want him to do. It was a nice job by, by the guys on the outside to still plug those holes because TLU probably thought they, they had the hole they were looking sure. for. Sure, yeah, they did. And you see you know, Chris Cobb and Carlton Brown, two other freshman defense linemen in there. You know, Mitchell Wibry all comes in here a minute, I think, on the next one. Uh, and really stuffs that thing up. So um, some nice plays there on the goal line to keep them out. And then what happens the next two plays is they have two penalties that back them up even more, uh, force them into a third and long. Uh, and that's where you see Connor comes in here and gets the big sack for us. Um, that was a really big play, forced them to a field goal. One thing I'll mention about Connor there, this was Connor's first start as well. Bo Robertson's been playing in front of him all year, uh, had an injury. He's probably done for the year, but he's going to be fine. It's just not much of the season left. Yeah. And uh, we talked all week about opportunities. Well, Connor's a kid that really took advantage of the opportunity. You know, he goes in his first start, he has 16 tackles, two yeah. tackles for a loss, forced fumble, and a sack. Yeah. Well, that's how you take advantage of the <laughs> yeah. opportunity. And, you know, the, be the beauty of him, too, we talked about all these freshmen. Well, he's just a sophomore. So more young players in there making plays that are uh, going to give us a chance to win a lot of games in the future. Now, a key to building a, a successful program is, is being good in all three facets. The defense obviously stepped up really well, but special teams made a nice play late in the game, a field goal block that, that kept it uh, kept it a pretty close score line, especially you know that late in the game. Yeah, it did. It, uh, it kept it close, uh, you know, going there late in the third quarter. Um, and you see as Carlton Brown gets a good push there right in the A-gap, gets the, the field goal blocked, and just gave us a lot of momentum there in the second half. You know, Carlton Brown's another freshman who's in there making a big play and, and making a difference. So excited about what Carlton has brought to us. Uh, so moving forward, obviously not the result we wanted against Texas Lutheran. Um, some positives, but at the end of the day, we're, we're still out there trying to, to pick up wins and build a, a winning culture. Uh, have an opportunity to do that this Saturday. Homecoming, also senior day against Sol Ross State. They're having a pretty good season. Uh, have really taken some steps forward, but they are coming off a loss to Howard Payne. Right. Uh, what do you want to see from the team? Uh, let's go ahead and just preview kind of this game against Sol Ross. Uh, it's going to be a good atmosphere, we would we would expect. And what do you want to see from the team Saturday? Yeah, well, it is going to be a good atmosphere. It's homecoming. It's supposed to be nice weather. I think the high is like 58. It's going to feel like college football, so we're excited about that. Yeah. Expecting a big crowd. Um, senior day, we're going to get to honor 15 seniors who've, who've hung in there and, and fought the good fight for four years. Yeah. Uh, we'll miss every one of them, um, so we'll get to honor them, so that'll be exciting. But Sol Ross is a much, much improved team. Yeah, they're a team that we beat 8 to nothing the last game of the year last year. Um, I think they've won three this year. They beat two teams that we haven't been able to beat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, They can run the ball. They've got a little running back, number two, who's as good as you'll see in this league, so uh, we've got to keep him contained. and. If we do those things, we'll, I think we'll be fine and have a good day and fully expect our guys to come and fight and play hard. They've done that all year. Yep. That's been their trademark is they will fight you. They will compete for four quarters, and um, that's what I expect to see them do on Saturday. Now, as we, we come into the last two games of the season, what's your message to the team to, to, about – obviously it is going to be about finishing strong, but what, what are the, the things that you want to see from the guys as they're wrapping up this season? Well, you got to fight and finish. You know, No matter what your record is or no matter what's left, you, you still got two opportunities to compete. Uh, you know, and if we win these last two games, there's a list of things that haven't been done here in a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, we win these last two games, we'll finish the year with the best record that's been here in seven years. Yep. You know, um, we win this Saturday, we'll finish 500 in our home stadium for the first time in about eight or nine years. Yep. You know, so there's still an awful lot to play for. We can finish with the highest ranking we've ever finished since joining the ASC. So um, to say that this season's winding down is true, but is there a lot to play for? Absolutely. Yep. You know, we're trying to build a program over the long term, not over one season. You know, it would be easy to um, compromise our culture and our convictions and who we want to be, you know, to try to go to 500, but we're not trying to do that. We're trying to build a big, big time successful program and that takes time and you have to start with building a good culture. So I want to see in these last two weeks fight and finish and accomplish some things that haven't been done here in a long time. 
Yeah, so Saturday, homecoming, Sol Ross State here at Bellhaven Bowl Stadium. Make sure to come out for that game support. It's going to be awesome. Uh, hopefully, hopefully see the stands packed out. We, uh, we've seen that a couple times this year, and it's been a lot of fun when it is. So make sure to show up, support the Blazers. And Coach, as always, thanks for joining us. You bet. Thanks for having me.